23, and I'll call the meeting of the Charter Review Committee to order by roll call. Uh, Mark? I'm Preston here. Patricia? Patricia Founder here. Robin? Robin Hubbard here. Gail? Gail Myers Levin here. Maxine? Maxine Minkoff here. Walter? Walter here. And John Fuller is here. We have seven members present. First item on the agenda is approval of minutes of January 9th, 2023. Move approval. Second. Second. You get that, Gail? First, who was the first? I, I Walter, I Walter. was. Robin. And Robin second. And Walter was second. first? Good. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I'll entertain a motion uh, to accept the minutes as read. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we got it. Now, are there any omissions or corrections? Seeing none, we'll vote by roll call. Mark? Mark Burston, aye. Patricia? Patricia Fallender, aye. Robin? Robin Hubbard, aye. Gail? Gail Myers, Levin, aye. Maxine? Maxine Minkoff, aye. Walter? Aye. <coughs> aye. And John Fuller votes aye 700 to approve. <clears throat> Is there anybody out there for public comment? No hands on Zoom. Mm. What did he say? No, no, hands. But no one's no there. Hands on no hands on Zoom. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I caused mm -hmm. that. Uh, I would like to note for the record that our liaison is here, Michael uh, Herman, and also in the audience is uh, Michael Mike Gradone, <laughs> and he is chair of the uh, town manager search committee. Is there anything uh, to add for the tracking sheet update? Um, I think I will be doing some tracking sheet update after we do the um, uh, the things tonight the, for the community preservation and such. And also, I'll probably add in about the third constable. Mm -hmm. It's not there yet, so I can put those in, and then I can post that, send it to me uh, to me at the post um, mm -hmm. to replace the old one that's on the on the uh, resource page. Okay. okay. Resource page, any other updates, Gail? Um, it occurred to me that as I was reviewing how much fabulous work we've done, um, we never put <laughs> the, um, Maxine's multi-member body information oh, that's true. on the website. And I think we know it's a draft <laughs> and we know we gave it to, um, kudos to Robin and whoever else did the survey because it looked fantastic. I just looked at it again today. That was Maxine. Um, <laughs> Okay, both of you. So that's Walter, what I'd like your permission to put on. And Walter. Walter was on that as well. Okay. Yeah. Walter. Whatever. All right, I will remind everybody that I have to post the meeting for next week tomorrow. So if you think of anything you want on there, you better let me know tonight. Um, if the town manager development consultant Rick White is out there, uh, okay. Yep, Rick, he's talking on the phone. See if we can. John. Yes. One, one more, one more yeah. thing for the agenda. If, if you think it's a good idea, um, I would like to in. prepare. I've got it halfway done. I'd like to prepare the charter as it will be if everything were to pass at town meeting so that we all have a look at what we've done. Um, and eventually, obviously, we're going to give it to Kelly after she passes, but it, after the, the articles pass at the ballot, I hope. But it's a piece of work that we should all look at before we do anything with it because it is the body of our work. So I'd like permission to be able to do that and bring it to you as a draft. I have it. Okay. okay. I just oh. have one question. Yes. Um, for the public hearing on the 27th, do we know the date that we need to have that posted in the newspaper or on the news outlets or the website? It's right around March 6th, I believe. Or no, 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 no. 
no, we have to note the notice for the public hearing has to go to, has to be posted. Two weeks prior. Two to weeks the prior to the meeting. Okay. okay. Which would be the 13th, I believe. 13th of February. <coughs> okay, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Rick White, the consultant uh, <laughs> for the town manager development, um, to our meeting. Uh, can you see us and hear us all right, Rick? I can. Okay. I can. I'd like to introduce the members to you, if I may. Great. To my left is Patricia Fallender. I'm John Fuller. To my right is Maxine Minkoff. Then Walter North and Robin uh, Hubbard. Gail Myers-Lavin and uh, Walt, uh, Mark, Mark Burson are in by Zoom like you are. Great. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yep. How can I help you? Well, what I'd like to do is uh, we'd like to get your perspective on what you think your role is, and then we may have some comments on what we think our role with you is. Okay. Um, you know, my, my role is specifically spelled out a contract between uh, the firm that I represent and, and the town. And in it, um, Rue White Consulting is uh, contracted to help the Board of Selectmen recruit its next town administrator slash manager if the um, charter changes are enacted. Uh, and as part of um, our contract, we uh, lay out a scope of services that are comprehensive, uh, that um, first require us to get a sense of the community and its culture and its needs. And as part of that, what we did was uh, interviewed individually the members of the, the town's um, professional leadership team. And then we asked the select board to forward us five names of people in the community they thought um, have some influence on town governance. So as a result, we got the names of about 25 people that we interviewed. Uh, we did um, anonymous sourcing with it and developed summaries of the feedback from both groups and then sat down with each individual member of the select board uh, and uh, use those summaries as a springboard for discussions with them to determine what they would like uh, to see as, uh, you know, what, what, what they think is important for the Orleans Next Town Manager, what skills, experiences, style they think the Next Town Manager should have uh, that comes to Orleans. Uh, from that, we uh, develop a profile uh, that we will, um, and a, a, a job advertisement that we will send out to a number of qualified applicants. And we will advertise in professional journals. And from there, we'll receive applicants, applications. We'll screen the applications. We'll do some recruiting on our own based on our understanding of um, Orleans uh, and will uh, at uh, some point, probably six weeks from now, present the comprehensive application package along with our recommendations for the screening committee to interview eight uh, people. We will review those applications with the screening committee. And I, 
I believe that the chairman is here at the meeting. Yes, he is. Yes, yes. I, I did ask him to come. Uh, we will, we will um, work with the screening committee, uh, and they will pick uh, their uh, recommended eight or more applicants that they would like to interview. Um, we work with the screening committee to provide uh, them a sense for, you know, what we found out, the feedback that we received. We work with them to develop a series of questions and process for them to extract uh, information to interview prospective candidates. It's my expectation that the committee would recommend, um, would, would identify three to four of the eight uh, or more uh, screen candidates uh, to um, recommend to the Board of Selectmen uh, or the Select Board, but before that um, to, to have a follow-up interview uh, to explore uh, the candidates' candidacy uh, a second time, this time not with eight, but with three to four. Um, once the screening committee has made its final recommendations, it's our job to um, work with the candidates to secure their permission to make their uh, application uh, public, uh, to do uh, background, credit, Corey, um, all, all sorts of you know background checks on the candidates and um, and do a comprehensive uh, reference check on on the candidates. Uh, from there, um, the screening committee and I will uh, serve the select board as they have a public uh, process. Right now, that has not been identified or firmed up. But um, the expectations are that at a minimum, there'll be public interviews. Uh, prospectively, there may be a meet and greet um, opportunity for the community, but uh, that is, hasn't been determined yet. Um, you know, that's that's a broad overview of what we do and what we're doing. Um, and you know, just by way of background about me. I spent 38 years uh, working as a manager in Massachusetts, um, almost 20 in, in Lexington. Uh, the last eight, uh, I uh, was the Dennis um, town administrator. Um, I have no small motor skills. Um, I can't build anything, repair anything, or um, have a, a hobby that requires any any type of small motor skills, so I consult uh, in my retirement. <laughs> um, and this this is sort of a hobby. Um, we we take the work very seriously. Um, it's not it's not the. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just getting a call here, and I I want to shut it off, but. Um, It'll phase out. Um, in any case, um, you know, because um, both Tom and I spent a lifetime doing this, we really care about the profession, who follows us, what contributions they make, um, and we approach the business that way. Uh, we don't necessarily do it for the money. We probably do about four to five searches a year. I also do a lot of organizational analysis and um, also do um, investigations to um, for um, uh, employee complaints around hostile work environment and stuff like that. But I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. I don't want to bore you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to open it up to our uh, members here, and we'll sort of get to how we perceive this at the beginning, 
and how it morphed into something else. And uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. Patricia. Um, Rick, thank you for being here. Um, sure. I would, I'd like to get a, um, some in information from you about your experience with um, the role of the town manager as far as um, which um, members of their staff report directly to them and how they're appointed. We had some discussions here um, where we wanted to have the new town manager uh, be, um, be able to appoint the director of finance. And um, that did not um, end up being something that we were able to uh, persuade the select board to do at this time. But I don't know if that will influence the people who will be applying if, if that's not um, something that if that's something that they have normally done in the past and now they won't be able to do that. What is your experience with town managers and their, um, how they um, appoint or relate to the director of finance? Well, um, the chair, Mike, has heard this a, a thousand times, so he'll be a little bored. Um, <laughs> I, I spent almost 20 years in Lexington as the town manager, probably has the strongest charter in the state investing as much authority in um, the manager as you can uh, by statute. It had a special act and a charter. Um, and within it, you know, I had complete th appointment authority for um, all personnel except for late legal counsel. Um, I awarded all contracts. Um, and then um, I ended my career in Dennis and it was what I call a general law community. It had no charter. It had no um, special act. Uh, it only had whatever authority the Board of Selectmen or the Select Board uh, delegated to me. I can tell you that, um, you know, my experience, and, and this is especially um, true right now with Orleans where it is in its its current state, um, it's much more important to develop a strong working relationship between the professional and the elected officials than it is to uh, bargain over uh, authority right now. Um, you know, it, at least my early findings are that um, right now the community would like a um, a lot of leadership, not only from the select board, but from its town administrator. Uh, they don't want um, a professional that just makes sure that the trains run on time. They would like someone who would work closely with the, the select board, take away some of the minutia that they find themselves spending time on in meetings and freeing up a lot of their time to deal with some of the the more uh, salient and more important big picture policy issues mm -hmm. that people are most concerned about. Uh, people um, saw a, um, a, a relationship that uh, between its professional and the select board that wasn't working in ways that they wanted it to. Uh, and right now, um, my focus is finding someone who is capable of uh, looking at themselves as a servant leader uh, and putting themselves in a position uh, where uh, they look at the select board as their primary customer uh, and that they do everything that they can do to make their job as easy as possible and to focus and to have them focus as much of their time on solving the town's important problems um, and um, using the staff to deal with some of the, the nitty-gritty issues that the select board sometimes finds itself dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis or at, at public meetings. Um, there's a, a real desire um, to have the committee system work uh, more uh, collaboratively uh, with the staff and aligned with the with, with the select board's work 
Um, right now, as best as I can tell, um, there are a number of silos in town uh, where this tremendous disconnect between what the select board would like to see happen and what the committees are working on. Um, and there's a um, significant ab absence of staff and professional support to the committees um, for any number of reasons that need to be altered and changed. And uh, you guys need someone to come in here and rebuild those those systems, those processes, and those relationships, so that um, that that the organization works and everybody does what they're supposed to be doing. I think once someone comes in and and does that, and there's trust built between all of the entities, between you know the community town meeting, uh, the select board, the committees, and the staff, um, then you can you can take a look at who appoints whom. Uh, and when. Um, I, I know that um, when I was in Dennis, um, the select board asked me to go out and recruit someone that, and, you know, the recommendation I would make was pro forma. It, you know, if you recommend them, that's okay by us. The finance committee that was very strong in town used to say, you're treating him like a strong town manager um, and he's not. You know, why are you doing this? And they would look at him because we trust him and we have a relationship with him and he's working for us and we're working with the staff and we're getting stuff done. And that's what you want here. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Yes, thank you. It's, it's, it's not a direct answer to your question, but it's it's the only one I got. Okay. Well, you're being a good politician. <laughs> Anyone over here? Gail? Um, I think probably the only practical thing, I think that uh, you're aware that the charter is the charter is the charter, and we've run out of time to change anything, and it does make sense to wait until the new town manager is appointed, and, and for all the reasons that you've just brought up. Um, we are a town that, although as we looked at all the different communities around us, there are some town managers that that do appoint virtually everyone except the school committee. Um, but this is a town that really has a very strong and committed, and the residents are committed to both the fire chief and the police chief. And um, it just as a as a piece of collective information. I was on the Charter Commission back in the 80s, and that was the case then, and it's been the case in every review committee that we've gone through, that that seems to be something that the town would like to keep, that emergency public um, safety piece, as um, keeping them independent. The um... As just the point of view. When I was in Dennis, um, the fire chief was a strong chief. Uh, the As he is here. Police chief wasn't. Um, uh, I will tell you that it, I appointed the both chiefs in Lexington and my relationship with the fire chief was no different than it was with the, the Lexington folks. Um, you know, the fire chief basically within a month said, you know, I can't be successful unless you're successful and I have your support. Um, so I'm going to act as if you're my boss. And I said, well, I'm going to act like that, too. <laughs> um, and, you know, um, it's, you know, right now, the main thing beyond the strong chiefs so the charter or the appointment things is the relationship. And, you know, right now, um, you have that developing with Charlie, who's the interim. Um, but as best as I can tell, you didn't have that before. And when you don't have trust and when you don't have strong relationships, 
then things atrophy and people get uh, anxious and cranky and demanding. And, um, you know, that is uh, multiplied some because this is a Cape community. Um, I worked in Lexington, which was an incredibly active place with lots of really bright, smart people who were either top-notch lawyers in Boston or academics at Harvard or BC or Northeastern. And, and, you know, my routine in speaking publicly was identifying myself as Rick White, the town manager of Lexington, this, the dumbest guy in town, because everybody was incredibly smart and demanding. And it was the demands and the the visibility required was like nothing I've ever seen until I got to Dennis. And although I wasn't expected to do as much public appearance, uh, the population in the Cape, as best as I can tell, uh, requires and demands a certain level of intimacy that doesn't exist anywhere else. Uh, when tax bills are due, the lines out uh, in front of the treasure collector's um, office are out the door. That doesn't happen anywhere but the Cape. Most people mail it in or pay their bills electronically. But people in the Cape want to touch it, feel it, and understand it. They want to know who their town administrator is. They want a certain amount of visibility and accessibility. Uh, and that's what I got from your people. Uh, and they want they want the systems that they have in place to work. And, you know, I think the committee uh, system especially is um, something that I think uh, the new person needs to work at uh, very carefully. I mean, if I were to make a suggestion right now for anything, it would be uh, to allow the appointing authority, removal authority for people on committees who may not either attend or cannot act civilly. My understanding is that the relationship between the staff and the committees broke down around um, behaviors and the relationship atrophied as a result of that. You know, you, you don't have uh, your finance professional uh, attending the finance committee meetings because of a broken relationship that happened. Um, you know, the, the heartbeat of a New England community, at least the 38 to 40 years that I spent in it, is in its volunteers, its community participants, and its committees. And right now, you know, that isn't working as well as it could be. Mark. Uh, <clears throat> when you reviewed the uh, existing charter and you looked at the requirements in connection with the essentially uh, hiring of a, of a town administrator, now called a town manager, did you find anything in those requirements handicapping you or preventing you from securing the candidate you want? Well, I'm going to I'm going to bring it up and just read it out loud and give you a reaction if that's OK. Um, well, you can you can read it and you can do it out loud, but I still like my question answered. If I, I'm gonna, and I, I promised you I'd give you a, an answer. Um, okay. You know, um, I think the chart, I took it right from the charter. Charter. Uh, candidates must be a person specifically fit by education, training, or previous experience in public administration to perform the powers, duties, of the office. The town administrator shall be appointed on the basis of educational, executive, and administrative qualifications and experience. The educational con 
qualifications shall consist of at least a bachelor's degree, preferably in public administration granted by an accredited degree granting college or university. The professional experience shall include at least five years of prior full-time compensated executive service in public or business administration. Alternatively, uh, at least two years of prior full-time compensated executive service in public or business administration and a master's degree in an appropriate discipline shall qualify an applicant. That's a pretty flexible pre-qualification. Um, you know, I, I it shouldn't inhibit me at all from um, recruiting someone. I'm not sure I would recommend anybody for you to interview or to take on the reins of uh, town manager, town administrator with less qualifications than that. Um, it's a an incredibly diverse and demanding job that requires a certain level of experience. And what you have in the charter is the basic minimum. Hi, John. Maxine. Yeah. My question, I was glad to hear you say that, Rick, but my question is, is that description um, onerous enough? Should it be, um, I'm be, there's very little in there that speaks to someone with the, the kind of experience that managing a town, per se, requires. And I say that because on paper, I have those qualifications. I certainly am not capable of doing the town manager job. And well, that's why you hire someone like me is to, to find that out if you apply. But will it be, uh, yeah, to find it out, but should it be more, more um, specifically indicated? I don't think that there's a panacea out there that you can describe that you want to give yourself as much flexibility as possible and you want to look at big picture and not your specific situation. A lot of communities sometimes after a series of managers will say, you know, we have the type of um, issues and history where the next um, manager should be someone from the private sector. Doesn't always work yeah. and often, you know, Charlie will tell you that probably nine times out of ten it doesn't work, but communities want uh, to do that. They, they, they want the flexibility of being able to do that. Um, in this case, um, it, you want to have the consultant give you an array of candidates. Uh, when I was appointed um, to Lexington, which is a very sophisticated job, I was 34 years old. Hmm. They wanted someone young, innovative, aggressive, that they had gone through a few years of not doing things and they wanted someone with a lot of energy. Um, now I met the minimum qualifications for um, the charter. I had been a town administrator in Bedford, Mass for four years before that. I was an assistant for four years in Winchester before that and I had a lot of analytical and uh, budget evaluation experience. Uh, but if they were to boost up the minimum qualifications, the board wouldn't have had that option. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, generally, you know, you, a community makes some of its hiring decisions based on what they had and what they saw as the weaknesses of the previous um, incumbent. Yeah. And we all got them. Every professional who goes in there has weaknesses and you know they have strengths 
They make major contributions to the community. But when you last a long time, people start to notice what you know you do well, but they also notice, you know, I would like this person to be a little different. Right. Um, and having having a, a broad minimum qualification uh, gives you the flexibility to, to make an adjustment based on where you are at, where you are and where you're at um, as a community. Thank you. You have a question. What you can ask? You can go first. Oh, <laughs> um, um, mine's a different type of question. Okay. In your discussions with the search committee and with members of the community, um, when we're looking for a new person um, to be the town um, a, town manager, um, Orleans is at a transition point here with the new sewer systems. With a, things are going to change. So has there been a, a significant discussion about what we're looking for for the next 10 years, 20 years um, that would influence who, who you would recommend and, um, and how, that, how that might um, change? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, one, what I heard is the community wants a manager who's accessible and transparent someone who's a leader and someone who's going to guide the community and some essential prioritization processes uh, in terms of some funding, um, some major challenges that Orleans is going to face in the next 10 to 20 years around coastal resiliency, around sewers, around infrastructure, it's downtown, a whole host of issues. Um, the town is in in great uh, shape. It had a, a very good technical manager who put you in a, in a good spot with great cash reserves. You don't have enough cash reserves to, um, to meet all the demands that you're going to see uh, in the next 10 to 20 years. Um, the community has changed so that it's a lot more active and requires a lot more uh, involvement in some of the prioritization processes that are made. So you're going to need someone who's had experience engaging the community, helping the Board of Selectmen develop process and having a track record of results in, you know, moving projects along but helping the community understand what the trade-offs are and, you know, what financial viability is um, so that, you know, everybody um, understands the decisions that are made. They may not agree with them all the time, but at least they have some basic understanding for what's going on. But clearly, you know, sewering, you know, coastal resiliency, affordable housing um, are huge issues that the town seems wanting to and poised uh, to try to address, and someone's got to have some experience not necessarily in each of those those items, but some experience with similar items, engaging the community and helping the board of selectmen or the select board uh, engage the community in a dialogue that prioritizes the needs and and can have some experiencing leveraging decent cash reserves uh, so that some of the work can get done. I I hope that makes sense. Thank but, you. Uh, yeah. From my point of view, I'd like to step back a couple of months or almost a year. The first thing we discovered as a charter review committee was that there is no such thing as a town manager in Massachusetts. There's no definition of one. And by the way, one of the places we looked at was Bedford, Massachusetts. <laughs> Sturbridge was another. Um, and we were kind of taken aback as a committee that, that Massachusetts had not defined a town manager as distinguished from a town administrator. That basically, you make your own definition. Yeah. We felt that changing the name from town administrator to town manager might seem to be a more 
strong position than uh, as a town manager than as a town administrator. But we found it very difficult to come up with what that what those jobs should be. And be perfectly honest with you, I felt that when they were going to hire you, you were going to tell us what a town manager should be. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, because of what happened uh, with the uh, retirement of our present town administrator, you became the leader of the search committee, a consultant well, well, for the search committee. That's the only role I know of. I, actually, Mike is the leader. Right. I'm supporting this, the committee. Well, you are the consultant to help Mike right. make those decisions. Right. And, and that sort of caught us by surprise, or at least caught me by surprise. And it ended our research on town manager. We brought it up uh, last year. We've been going almost three years now. It's kind of a long charter review. But we've also got 20 some odd changes that we want to make. Uh, and uh, many of them have been voted on already at town meeting. They haven't been voted at the ballot yet. And we've worked very hard on it, had a lot of meetings, uh, very great attendance by the members here, members with a lot of experience in charter review besides. And when we went to the selectmen and suggested what we thought uh, changes to the requirements or the duties that a town manager would have, there was a lot of resistance to some of the recommendations we made. And uh, therefore, that did never reach town meeting, never reached the warrant. And now that the, our town administrator is gone, it will not make this round in the charter review because we've run out of time. Um, I, I think that what you have told us is very helpful. It just uh, uh, we can't do anything anymore as far as charter review goes. Well, well, let let me help you with the difference between town administrator um, and town manager. Um, in the early 1900s, as a result of um, New York's experience with Tammany Hall, um, a reform movement came about. The National Civic League in somewhere around 1911, came out with a model city charter, which revamped um, how uh, cities and towns were to be structured, moving to a council manager form with councilors being elected at large, anywhere between seven and 11, and for the first time, uh, appointed in Staunton, uh, Virginia, um, a professional uh, who um, was responsible for the day-to-day -day administration of, of government under the guise that there would be no political favor, that uh, no matter who you voted for in the election, you would get the same services as the person who voted against uh, incumbents or vice versa. In the early days, most of the city managers were engineers because the communities were growing. Um, as they evolved, uh, they became more financial experts as communities tried to cope with uh, the baby boom uh, and uh, growing communities and keeping their finances straight. Um, as the 60s came about, um, communities changed and people became much more, much bigger advocates. And not only did you have to have part, be part engineer, part business person, but you also had to be able to be especially equipped in, um, in uh, process, and public participation. Uh, and, you know, this history is layered upon New England that didn't have the same government form 
that the rest of the country has. Our government has its roots in the original settlers. Town meeting is a form of government that existed uh, through the first parish in every community before there was ever a state of Massachusetts uh, or a United States. And when, mass, when cities and towns incorporated and became cities, they took what became natural to them and had town meetings and a board of selectmen. Um, and, you know, essentially the, the, the state of Massachusetts and most of New England has been very hesitant to move away from it and adopt the model city church. So no matter what you have, no matter what form, no matter what charter you have, you have a completely different animal in New England than you do in the rest of the country. Um, but even within Massachusetts, every charter is different. And I can tell you, I worked in Bedford, the only difference in the charter that was there when I was there and the one now is the town administrator's name was changed to town manager. <laughs> That's all they did. But if you look at communities, at the charters of uh, communities like Watertown, like Lexington, like Danvers, those, those charters are as close to the pure uh, plan adopted by the Civic League or proposed by the Civic League in the early 1900s that you can find in Massachusetts and still conform to you know, the, the idiosyncratic government structure that we have here with town meeting and the board of selectmen. Um, and the charter basically um, spells out the, the powers, duties, and authority of the town manager. So my recommendation is if you really want to find out the differences between the two, you look at Lexington, Danvers, Watertown, uh, Amherst, I think, actually went to a, a town council. So I, I think um, their forms are probably as close to the National Civic League model that was identified and hasn't changed much since the early 1900s. You probably got more than you bargained for, but I'm sorry. No, good history lesson. Uh, anybody in the audience have any comments? Gail has a question. You want to Gail. speak? No, Gail. Gail has Gail. Gail. You're muted. You're muted, Gail. I did that because my cat was doing her wail. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to listen to it because it's really awful. <laughs> but in any case, um, we also we looked at at the Cape Towns for the most part and. Although, as the Cape Town started to become charter people in the 80s, most, well, Provincetown was before that, but um, they really all tended to have the same couple of consultants who wrote essentially the same charter for each of the towns. But they do differ, whatever you call them, they're mostly now changing to um, become town managers, but one town does one town does have the manager appoint the police and fire chief other managers don't one does the department of municipal finance another one doesn't and i think that was basically the the conclusion that um that we came to actually in the in the 80s but i think is is relevant today that you pick your town whatever the i mean you don't pick your town but the town that one is in is yeah, um, just as you have said to us, you know, has it, it really um, requires you as a consultant to try and get as much of a handle on the on the you know heartbeat of the town as you go towards helping the search committee find some candidates. Any further comments, yeah. Walter? Thanks, Rick. Thank you so much for the uh, over overview of the problem set that faces the next uh, town manager that is likely to come to the town of Orleans. I think it very much aligns 
with the feedback that we were given at the initial stages of our review. And the red flag that I see and worry about is that in response to that, as well as in response to the guidance that the Charter Review Commission was given initially to look at the role of the town then administrator and come up with some suggestions for making it a stronger position so that the select board could focus on the policy issues as you outlined in your earlier comments. And then when we tried to do that, uh, and I recognize that institutional fixes, what's written in a charter is not the solution that personal chemistry sometimes is the glue that makes things work or not work. But nonetheless, as we explored that and actively proposed ways to make that position stronger, we found that in fact, there wasn't clarity of purpose on the select board and in other parts of the town about that vision. So that just made us worry that your process might lead to an outcome where a candidate will be identified who does have those strong qualities, but they will face a, uh, a setting where it will be very difficult to achieve the opportunity to exercise those capabilities. Um, part of my job is to prepare the, the select board for the next phase of their lives. And uh, I suspect by now you've figured out that I'm fairly direct and um, although on occasion I can have a tinge of diplomacy, I'm <laughs> much more direct than, than most. Um, and these are all issues I'm discussing with the select board because um, the person who comes in here won't work, won't be able to walk on water. They'll only be as good as the select board will be. Um, and this is their opportunity to develop a partnership with their pro uh, and, you know, forge out a relationship um, so that they're both a success. And, you know, that's my message. That's been my personal message to all of them. That's been my public message to them in public session and it will continue to be. Um, because, you know, I, I, we do a lot of recruiting, uh, no, you know, not a, not so much that we, we're constantly busy, but we do a lot and we give a guarantee. Um, we recommend, we believe that anybody that we recommend uh, will stay here and make a commitment to Orleans. And we figure that within an 18 month period, both the candidate and um, the town should figure out whether the relationship's gonna work. Um, we guarantee that if it doesn't, we'll do the search for free. We've done hundreds of searches and we've never had to redo one. Mm. So he's the first time. <laughs> well, we did. <laughs> you know. Um, the, so upbeat, Mark. <laughs> so upbeat, so upbeat. <laughs> The, the town of Brewster was looking for a, a 35 year guarantee many, many years ago, um, <laughs> but they didn't get it. Almost did it. <laughs> Other comments by anybody? Anybody in the audience? Okay, thank you very much, Rick. It was very enlightening. Yeah, thanks yes. for your time. And, and Sorry for the uh, good government lecture and the. That's all right. No, that's all right. That's, that's quite Charlie's all right. Charlie's going to give me a hard time when I get off. Uh, uh, no. I just want to say we you saw your you saw your opportunities and you took them on the town manager issue. It was a major issue for us, and we we could not resolve it amongst ourselves <laughs> nor with the select board. Okay, thank you very it over much, to you. Thank we're you. We're going to move <laughs> on. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Next is a uh, final wording for the change to 6-11-1, the Communi uh, Community Preservation Committee. Uh, Gail? Gail uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, John. Yes. Pat left at 6:20. She had another commitment. And uh, two of our guests, uh, Charlie Sumner and Mike Gardone, have left the meeting. And with Mike.
and the uh, Rick White is gone. Okay? All right. 6-11-1 Community Preservation Committee. I think Gail had something on that. Some wording change. She's got a... This, this. Yeah. I think it was. It's just a clarification, sorry. right? And, and I'm sorry, I'm back. Uh, oh, um, we're talking about six dash eleven dash one. Yes. Um, would you like me to go through it? No. <laughs> it looks. It looks well, great. You have two things that you do have to go through. Yeah, but this, um, let's finish with six one one. That's six what eleven this is. one. Yeah. That is exactly what this is. Right, it looks fine. Okay, yeah. just so that you know, the, um, <laughs> what, is taken, what has been taken off is the part about um, from, the, from the three remaining members shall be appointed, yada, 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 which was in the existing code, but we don't need it in the charter because it's irrelevant. So that's why you're looking at it the way that it is on mm -hmm. the top. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So can I recommend some, a summary? Yep. This amendment cleans up existing charter language to make this section clearer and more consistent. To make this session what? Clearer and more consistent. Clear. Sorry. Clearer and more consistent. Got it. Well, I think the first thing we'll do is entertain a motion to make the change to the charter as outlined by Gail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, moves. Second. Uh, Maxine seconds. Mark uh, moved it. Further discussion? Uh, there is no further discussion, so uh, by roll call, Mark. Clark Burston, aye. Robin. Robin Hubbard, aye. Gail. Gail Myers, love and I. Maxine. Maxine Minkoff, aye. Walter. Aye. <clears throat> John Fuller votes aye. It's 6-0-0. So that covers that. And, uh, John, quick question. Um, yes. Uh, Gail, were we also meant to do 4-4-1? Um, y yes, but John, John didn't put them on the agenda. I think he's planning to have us do it on um, February the 6th. Okay. The other two. Okay. Okay. What was the number again? 441. Four, four, 441. 441 four, four, is the, um, to add in the Director of Planning and Community Development and the Conservation Agent and the Treasure, treasure Tax. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the third one is, is the Constable. So, I mean, they're really easy. They were on the agenda for last time, but I think we probably can just wait so we can leave soon. There's a plan. <laughs> you, you're going, you're leaving your house? <laughs> we, we can vote on those now because they, they were in the discussion. Okay. Fascinating. That's sick. So, okay. the, um, basically, as I've said, except I was rushing through it, the, um, the article will simply um, insert the names of, of um, appointees who were inadvertently missed out of the charter when that section was put together. I'm sorry, John, so, so you've moved to approve these today? Yes. We can, that's okay, even though it's not on the agenda? No, we can do them. Okay, so I move approval. Of that one. Of, that, of the draft article B441. Okay, do we, second. do we have a second? Second. A Robin second. seconds? Three seconds. Robin? Three seconds. Got it. Three. Okay. Further discussion? All those in favor by roll call? Mark? Mark Worston, aye. Robin? Robin Hubbard, aye. Gail? Gail Myers, Lavin, aye. Maxine? Aye. Walter? Aye. 
And John Fuller votes aye. That's six zero zero for that. And the other one was adding a third constable. And Gail, I have some suggested summary language. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, you can send her your suggestion. Oh, okay, we don't have to do that. Yeah, and here. then we'll vote on it Thanks at the next, next meeting. Next meeting. Okay. Okay. We're, we're going to vote on do we want this in okay. the charter. Okay, fine. But your summary will vote on at the next meeting. Okay. I move approval. I'll second. Uh, uh, Walter <laughs> moves to add the third constable. Yeah. Uh, Maxine yeah. seconded. He seconded. Got it. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor by roll call. Mark? Mark Christian, aye. Robin? Robin Hubbard, aye. Maxine? Aye. Walter? Aye. You forgot Gail? And Gail. Gail. Gail, Gail Myers, love, and aye. And I vote aye at 600 to put that one forward. Now we need to run them by town council, but I don't think there's anything too controversial about any of those. Oh. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> so Mark's we need to see if we can establish a meeting, positivity here, Mark. <laughs> a meeting with town council before we bring them to the select board. Um, John? Yes. Pat usually gets in touch with him, I, and I'm happy to do that. I think he would do it by, by an email with, the, you know, with attachments and save his time for going in to see him. Do we have consensus to have Gail send that to the <coughs> sure. council? Yeah, definitely. Just so we have his comment before the public hearing on the 27th? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, You're Gail, welcome. for doing all this stuff. Mm, yes. And that'll give you uh, about four days to talk to Gail about your uh, summaries. If I remember. <laughs> the and we will... Uh, well, it's only meeting times we have, <laughs> so uh, we'll bring that up on the 6th. There'll be very few items I see on the 6th that we have to do, and perhaps we can have a comment from town council by then. I doubt it, but possibly. And then uh, I will get together the um, public hearing notice. Uh, we still have that, right, Gail, the, the past public hearing notice? Yes. All we have to do is plug in the new dates? Um, yes, we, we usually do it, through, um, Pat usually does it through Molly. I mean, okay. she will do it for you if you just give her the date. Okay. But I think we did write it, but I can, I'll pull it out and send it to you and you can decide. Okay. Um, so I don't anticipate our public hearings going to be probably not attended at all, but hopefully somebody will have something to say and, uh, and it'll go pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, getting down to future agenda items, which is what we're doing now. Uh, I've asked to meet with the select board on the 1st of March mm -hmm. and it would be just these three items and see if they want to, uh, and when we'll have the summaries and everything, mm -hmm. and see if they want to include those on this uh, warrant. And then potentially that's about all we have time left to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we need to develop uh, the advertising for the articles at the annual town meeting and election ballot although these won't be on the election ballot till 2024. The, the other ones will be on this election ballot. So, but it's something to sell it at town meetings since people can say one thing and it morphs into uh, every other thing we talk about. Hopefully that we can avoid that this time. I don't anticipate needing a meeting date on the 20th. Of, of March. We do have that date available if we need it, but I don't anticipate anything there, but I'm going to leave it on there. Mm -hmm. And I think John, I, I think, yes, Gail. Um, I, I would like to ask you to move the final report up. I think that on the basis of what we said tonight and what we 
no after the last three years. Um, plus uh, the other information that would talk about the the survey that was done and so on and so forth for the final report is something that we will probably want to look at more than once. And so I just don't want it to stay till the end. Okay, but uh, the actual final report would be submitted on the 22nd, which is after the election and the next available uh, select board meeting if they choose to meet. Right, but we have to have it written before. Yes. Maybe the maybe a, a process for writing it is to delegate a draft to to a small working group. I think? think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you want to do the draft on the sixth of March? Um, sure, because I don't think the advertising and the and the articles is going to be is going to be very much. You know, maybe we'll try and see if we can get. A reporter from the Chronicle to be interested and do a sort of feature on all the hard work we've been doing. <laughs> you're the you're the hard worker. Mm. Yeah. Well, well, I'll add that to the March sixth date. Mm -hmm. Okay. To review the draft, and, and maybe actually for our meeting next week, John, we could have an agenda identifying the, the working group to do the report. <clears throat> Have an agenda, agenda item to identify the working group to do the draft of okay. the report. Because I think Pat would be a great. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. not here, and I can't nominate her. In <laughs> well, we want to identify the group before the day we're going to do right, it. Right, right. <laughs> uh, then we would probably we can do it on the public hearing night after the public hearing. We could. Yeah, the, the will hear if anybody comments on it, yeah. and we can have the identify the uh, who's going to uh, draft that on there uh, on the twenty seventh. Any volunteers? I think we should do it with Pat's here. Mm, yeah, Pat. Mm -hmm. well, we don't want to volunteer her. her. <laughs> That's her not here, so we can't do that. She is. She is going away. Um, but I'm not sure when, but she's going to be away for a few weeks. But we can ask her. Yeah, well, we'll talk about the draft group on the 27th. Yeah. Okay, and I believe I've got the dates for the annual town meeting and the annual mm -hmm. election correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we'll actually develop our final report on the 22nd and then present it to the Board of Selectmen on the 24th of May. And then we party. And then ask to be we party? Uh, disbanded on that same day. Um, actually, town meeting is on the 8th, John. Not the 9th. Isn't it the first Tuesday after the, after the second, or the first Monday? Um, town, yes, but it's on a Monday, the town meeting. Which is May 8th. It's the first Monday. It's the 8th? Yeah, it's my birthday. That's how I know. <laughs> That's what? Mother's Day. Not the eighth. <laughs> and I would think the election is going to be on a Tuesday. It, it, it is. So that that should 16th. be the sixteenth. Sixteenth. Okay. Yeah. And May eighth is the Monday. Yeah. And the sixteenth is the Tuesday. Yep. Okay. So it's the eighth for the annual town meeting, the sixteenth for the annual election. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. I'll correct that. Any other <laughs> items you want to for future agenda? I don't. There's just not a, anything left to do, really. No. Nope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I move we adjourn. Second. <laughs> Third. Uh, Robin moved to adjourn. Uh, Walter, Walter seconded. seconded. All those in favor by roll call. Mark. Amen. <laughs> My person eyes. <laughs> Robin. Robert Hubbard eye. Bill. Gail Myers, Levin, aye. Maxine. Maxine Minkoff, aye. Walter. Aye. John Fuller votes aye at uh, 640. 40. Okay.